Hello, my name is Adrian. In this tutorial, I will show you my workflow in creating digital twins of archaeology sites and artifacts and importing them into Unreal Engine. I will first cover how to use Reality Capture, a photogrammetry software. This will stitch together photographs to create 3D models. When you open Reality Capture, you will be set to a new project. In this project, we will be reconstructing a section of the site of Tel Dan. I currently have my layout as 1 plus 1. That will have the data on the left and my 3D scene on the right. To start reconstructing a 3D scene, I'm going to add a folder of images that contains drone captures of the site. We have a total of 379 images. And if we click on one of these images, The 2D data is shown here. It is even geo-referenced, shown in this icon here. Let's go back to the one plus one layout. Before we align these images, we should save our project. Let's name this project the Israelite Gate. Now let's align the images. Go to the alignment tab on top and let's check the settings. The image overlap is set to low and the other, and the other settings also look good. The process will begin once you click align images. Depending on the number of images and the computer's CPU, the time will vary. Now that is done aligning, we can see in our we can see in our 3D scene a point cloud on the aligned images. The position of the cameras are now displayed to show where each image is located on the site. Like for example, here I could click it here. You can see the 2D data on the right. Next, we will reconstruct this into a mesh model. When you click on the mesh model tab. You will see here, we can create our 3D model by clicking Normal Detail. Reality Capture will start calculating how to reconstruct the model, so this will take some time. Now that it is finished, we can see the reconstruction model. We can rotate the model by holding down the right mouse button, zoom in and out with the mouse wheel, and move the point of view by holding down the left mouse button. Some of the details we could see even without the texture are the brick walls and some of the trees, like here and along this path. You will have to filter out some of these undesired parts, but to know it's a filter, we have to apply the texture to the model. Next, we will do an unwrap. In the Mesh Model tab, click Unwrap next to Texture. We will set the style to maximal texture count. Towards the end of this tutorial, we are actually going to use the fixed texture count to get more textures for our 3D model. But for now, since we all we want is to know what we need to filter out, we're going to do maximal texture count and click Unwrap. Now the 3D model is wrapped in a checkerboard texture. Now this will allow us to texture. We will have to adjust some of the color and texture settings. Close the Unwrap tool window. Click on the settings next to texture. The general settings I have selected are gutter as two, the maximum texture resolution is as 8K, the large trigo removal as 10, the style as maximal texture count, and the maximal texture count as 32. 
Now click Texture and let it process. You may notice the large triangles that surround this 3D scene. Even the trees don't look too great because Reality Capture was unable to reconstruct the ground surface near the trees. These are the undesired parts of the scene that we don't want when exporting this model and importing it into other programs. We will need to filter, filter these out. In the Tools tab under Scene 3D, we have different tools to filter, Lasso, Rectangle, and Box. These three filtering tools allow us to manually filter parts of the scene. Additionally, if we click on Advanced, we can automatically select the large triangles in the scene. There are some triangles we may want to keep. Let's select the Lasso tool. If we left click and lasso a section of the scene, the large triangles become unselected. We don't want that. Click Ctrl and Z to undo the selection. When we use the lasso tool, we have to hold down the control button to add to our selection. You can see the plus sign below the cursor. To remove selections of the model, hold down the shift button. Now there will be a negative sign below the cursor. When you are done using the lasso tool, click on the lasso button again to deselect the tool. Other tools we can use is select all, select all to select the whole model, deselect, and invert to invert our selection. Click on Filter Selection. A new model will be generated without the large triangles. Now let's manually select parts of the scene that we don't want in the final model. This process will take a while and it will always vary depending on how well a site was photographed. For the most part, I got the trees. I'm going to filter out these trees, and then next I'm going to try to clean up the border. I have selected the borders that I don't want in the final model. Also, some of the larger triangles and some of the floating triangles that were still in the scene from the previous trees. I'll select Filter Selection. You may notice all the holes in our scene. We can actually close these with the Close Holes tools. One of the problems is we can only do it for 1 million triangles or edges. So in this case, we may have, we have to simplify first. The target triangle count will be simplified to 10 million, as our current scene has 23 million triangles. Click Simplify. Now our model has 10 million triangles. This will make it easier to close the holes. Close the Simplify Tool window. With the Lasso tool, Go around a hole. Make sure all the edges are selected and click close holes.
This will be a tedious process because the max edge count can only be 1 million. So multiple models will be generated. I have closed all the holes and now I am satisfied with the model. Let's do an unwrap and texturing again. Go to mesh model, unwrap. This time around, we will choose a fixed textile size. Our textile size will be custom and will be set to 0 0.002 or two millimeters. Click unwrap. Next, click texture. With the texturing finished, and because we did a fixed texel unwrapping, our current model has thirty-two textures. The reconstruction is now done, and we can export it. Go to the workflow tab, and in three dot. Output, click on export. We're going to save it as an OBJ. And I already have a desired folder where I want this. Click save. And we want the texture also to be exported. With the OBJ being created, we can import this into the Unreal Engine. I also wanted to show how I applied the same workflow we did for reconstructing archaeology sites for also reconstructing museum exhibits. So the first thing I did was importing the images which was 72 images for this case. Align the images, which created this first model that has 13.9 million triangles. And I applied the texture to the second model. And then I simplified it down for model three to 10 million triangles. And then for model five, this is where I filtered out just to have this part of the exhibit for this display, along with just the photo right here in the wall. I have to turn on the texture. And for the Padre one as well, the texture is already on. And you can really see how well this Padre looked. The only problem I would say is sometimes it, it can really get the glass. And model six, was just really filtering out the border to make it look more appealing. Overall, I used the same workflow to reconstruct different displays in the museum we were working on. And from there, we could export these into Unreal Engine and create a better virtual experience where people can actually walk around these displays in a VR environment.